Okay, we're going back to the domain of a radical. Um, my last video, uh, we kind of centered around, um, you know, avoiding this situation right here, square root of a negative number, because there's no real solutions. But if you have the cube root of a number, that, that situation doesn't apply. Because remember that if, um, if I have an odd power, Okay, the, if, if I take a negative number and raise it to an odd power, it stays odd, okay? So, so I, I'm, I'm allowed to have um, a negative number in the radical of a cube root. It's, it's perfectly okay, okay? Um, so let, let's take a look at this one. Here is uh, the cube root of, of x minus 3, okay? So let's see here. Um, just, you know, just, just right off the bat, you know, there's really no number I could I could I can plug in here um, that that's going to ruin this. You know, it's going to cause me to lose my mind or anything like that. Um, e even if if I put in like uh, uh, if I put in negative twelve, I get a cube root of negative fifteen. And I mean, it's not a pretty number, but it's we can we can do it. You know, it can be calculated. Um, so really, the domain of this, okay, is actually infinite. Okay, it exists everywhere on the graph. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to kind of sketch a graph of it. Okay. So let's see here. Well, right off the bat, um, I don't have to do too much, but I know if, if x is equal to 3, this whole thing's going to be worth 0. So we're going to have nothing right there. And if, if I take, let's say I take... Um, you know, say I put in negative, I don't know, like, like negative 50. Then I get the, the square root of negative 53, or the cube root of negative 53. Well, that's also going to be a negative number. Just like if I put in 1 right here, I end up with 1 minus 3. Okay, let's do that. See, I put in 1, I end up with the cube root of negative 2, don't I? So it looks like everything that's less than zero that I put into this uh, x value right here is going to render this function less than zero. Okay, it's all it's always going to be negative. Okay, because if I have a negative inside the radical, then I know that's the result of a negative number being multiplied by itself. You know, a certain amount of times. Okay, um, and likewise, if I go bigger than three, say I put four in here, we go four minus three wind up with the cube root of, of 1, don't I? Which is just 1. Because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so I end up with a positive number. And if I put 50 minus 3, I get, I get 47. I get, I get, so I could take the cube root of 47. So you can see that eventually, you know, the numbers get bigger and bigger, but they're always positive. And that's, a, that's an easy way to graph one of these functions, too. Okay? So, um, that... I just wanted to do a quick follow up on this one. Um, so, and just explain to you why the domain of this radical function um, is uh, different than the square root function. Okay, because I didn't want you, because it's really easy to uh, kind of get used to the square root function and just make a mistake somewhere on down the road and assume that negative numbers in a radical are bad. Because they're really not always bad, you know, unless, you know, it's, a, it's an even power. So, um, hope, hope, hope this helped you. Uh, if it didn't let me know, I'll make another one. So, um, see you in the next uh, series of videos. Thanks.